Today, I'd like to talk about running a AGM battery in parallel with a lithium battery. I'm sure you've got questions, so do I. I've done some testing, let's talk about it. Let's also talk about why you might wanna do that. Got a uh, little bear cub helping us out here. How you doing, big boy? <laughs> he's such a ham. Yeah, he's growing up. He's, uh, what, 14 weeks now? Aren't you, big boy? Yeah, all teeth later. Okay. That's not what everybody's here for. Everybody's here for this, this uh, lithium EGM conversation. So let's uh, first talk about the setup. So I've got a 280 amp hour lithium battery that I built. Uh, I don't know if we're going to sell exactly this, but it's something I built this spring and been putzing around with. It's got a Dally BMS so we can also record things there. Uh, this is hooked up into our test rig here. We've got the Serbo GX uh, with the display, the monitor, everything. Got the MultiPlus inverter to uh, provide loads. Then we've got a 330 amp hour AGM and we've got its own shunt on that. And I should also add, yeah, we've got a shunt on the entire system and a shunt just on this. This allows us to measure what does the AGM battery ask or what does it draw and what does it uh, output while we're in a charge and discharge cycle. And I think you might be surprised at what happens. Batteries don't discriminate against amps, okay? A lot of manufacturers are gonna say, well, you, you shouldn't connect a lithium battery with an AGM battery. You should always do like types together. And I totally agree for the most part, especially when you're talking about liability. What are you gonna be liable for? I would never want to tie my battery with an AGM as far as a liability standpoint uh, is concerned. <clears throat> but what the goal of this test here is to see what actually happens. So let's take a look. So I have been running this now for about three days and I've got the main battery monitor and an AGM battery monitor. I charged them both completely up and we ended up, as you can see here, uh, we're now back in the charge phase. I disconnected the solar for a while where we actually went down below 30%. I think this morning we were at 29% battery. Uh, on the lithium, it, it was down to 12.7 volts. And the AGM battery had used 0%, or uh, no, I shouldn't say 0, 1%. And we can actually, oh, that's not the one I want. We can actually take a look. We used a total of, well, now we're at nine amp hours. I wanna say it was about 12. Meanwhile, most of the power had come from the lithium. Okay, let's take a look at some longer term data here. I've got the uh, VRM profile for the Soda Solar Lab, and I created a custom widget on the uh, on our advanced tab on the VRM. And you can look at this long term data, and this is what we were looking at uh, most recently. You can see how. Uh, actually, the, the lithium battery or the system overall went to zero because the, the AGM battery started to pick up. So its overall state of charge, it thought it was well below zero. But you can see it, uh, I mean, we went down to 30% discharge or 30% remaining before we really started dipping into the AGM at all. And now for the last couple of weeks, it's been cycling without any problems. You can see the AGM for the most part bounces between about 99.9, 99.8 and 100. And now we've got a couple of days of rain and we're continuing to drop and still the same thing. We're not really using hardly anything. All right, take a look at this little arts and crafts project I made here as to why this ends up working the way it does. So <clears throat> here is a crude illustration of the way the working voltages work between lithium and AGM. This is lithium iron phosphate here. They both, what's nice about them is they both will uh, charge up to about 14.4 volts. That's just fine. So the same ch charging profiles can work. And then uh, what happens is lithium has a much higher working voltage. It rests much higher. So most of its working uh, capacity is above the AGM. 
However, AGM's float voltage is about that same voltage. So it doesn't ask any power from the lithium and it also doesn't uh, push any back. So it's almost perfect. It's just kind of sitting there as standby, which is gonna be important in the next couple of things we're gonna talk about. And then as you can see, as the voltage gets lower down to about 12.7 or so, the lithium starts falling off and you're gonna see the AG AGM start to pick up and it more of its usable capacity is below that. Now, the big question is of course, why? Why would I wanna do this? A uh, couple of reasons, I would say. Uh, let's look at what AGM is really good at. It does not care if it is cold. It does not care if it is 40 degrees below zero, it will produce power. It's gonna be severely reduced, yes, but it will produce power. Uh, where we live in Minnesota, uh, a lot of people are asking about how do we power ice houses? And I wanna say lithium, lithium would be great, but if you leave it up there, believe it or not, if you don't know, uh, people will leave an ice house out on the lake for a couple of weeks, a month at a time, and they're not gonna keep it heated that entire time. So even a self-heated lithium battery is going to be a problem because it's gonna drain. Uh, whereas an AGM can just sit there and be fine. And that way, when you get there, right, let's just say if you had a hybrid setup like this in an ice house, well, your AGM battery can get your furnace going, can get all the, you know, the basics up and running, even with, even if you have a small solar system on it. But then the lithium is going to provide most of your working power once it gets warm. And that's kind of the one that you work with most of the time. But the AGM is kind of like your safety net. Now, let's talk about something else that AGM is really good at. It uh, can produce a lot of amps really quick. There's no BMS in it. Lithium without a BMS can also do that, but I really don't recommend running a lithium without a BMS. So uh, if you had a situation like on my bus, uh, I actually do this exact same thing. That's why I had, a, I had a very sneaking suspicion that this would work just fine. I was actually surprised at how well it worked, how little power the AGM drawed from the lithium system. But uh, if you had two systems that were coupled together and you needed to you know, start an engine or something like that, EGM battery is great to have on hand and to keep coupled to the system most of the time. Then when I start my bus, what I typically do is I disconnect the lithium from it because I don't want to cook a BMS. I've already done it once, it was on accident. And then the EGM can do its job and then you can connect them back together and it'll charge up and for the most part, it'll work fine. Uh, I've had at least one customer on an Airstream do this because uh, Airstream will, they give you a nice lifeline, lifeline, yeah, lifeline AGMs in the standard battery box in front. But then uh, we put in a whole lithium system and they asked me the question of, well, can I just leave them in there? Can I leave them connected as part of the system? And I thought about it a little bit and I said, well, most people would probably tell you not, but based on my experience, I don't think it'll be a problem. And this particular customer has been running it for a while and um, haven't really had much of an issue. And the thing, I, again, I will stress, if you hypothetically were to accidentally run your lithium bank all the way down, then your, your AGM couple of batteries that came with your Airstream or other RV just kind of acts as a extra reserve capacity that's just available to you, even if something goes haywire with the lithium. Um, I'm not sure off the top of my head about other scenarios where this makes sense. Um, kind of the, the temperature and the amps and the reserve capacity is kind of what's coming to me right now, but I'd love to hear what you think might be good. And, uh, yeah. Uh, if there's anything else with batteries you'd like me to test, uh, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear about that. We're always liking to do that sort of stuff. I do have a couple of ideas. Um, I guess let me know if one of these is really on your mind that you'd love to know. One of which is, do you really need a lithium battery charger? Can you just use a car battery charger? And the answer may surprise you, at least what I've found. Until next time, I will see you later. And thanks for watching, bye. Oh, well baby, little baby bear, what are you doing? This is all he does. He is bear, destroyer of things. No, don't.